Today, I'm speaking with Penny Althaus, the chief executive of USA Rare Earth, to get an update on the company's quite impressive progress towards uh, production. Uh, can you can you uh, bring us up to date uh, briefly, Penny, on, on when and how much material you'll be producing this year and next year? Yes, yeah, so this year our objective is to produce materials separated materials uh, out of our demonstration plant at site at Round Top in West Texas uh, for customers uh, to specification. Uh, so we've actually already started to break ground on the demonstration plant. And we again, we anticipate having uh, those materials available for customers by the end of the year. So that'll obviously be smaller quantities. It's not for the purpose of you know revenue. Uh, it's for the purpose of being able to provide feedstock to customers and also um, as a stepping stone, if you will, to full scale commercial production in 2023. Can you please name for us what those materials will be? Yeah, so we've got, you know, obviously a significant amount or a diverse amount of materials at Roundtop. We're not going to be processing and producing all of them. Uh, we're going to be focused, of course, on the magnet materials, so DYTB, NDPR. We'll, we'll also be producing uh, hafnium, gallium, zirconium, uh, lithium. Uh, we'll also look at a couple of the other uh, tech metals and, and rare earths, uh, I think yttrium, ytterbium. Uh, so, you know, we'll, we'll look at sort of those key materials. You know, we've got 30 or so materials at Round Top. We're not planning to produce or market 30 materials. We'll probably start off with about eight or nine materials. And, and uh, it's my understanding that you are now... Uh, open to and, and doing sourcing from other from other uh, producers of, of, of the mineral concentrates for, for processing in your plant. You, you had uh, announced some time ago that, that you were looking at what I call toll processing. Uh, I assume that, that besides toll processing, you're lo looking to buy in uh, materials from, from other producers for, uh, for final uh, processing. Yeah, I mean, we're working with Australian companies, Canadian companies, uh, a group out of Europe, uh, Latin American companies. And I mean, the objective for us is twofold. You know, one, um, the demand for the materials in the United States is obviously always increasing. And we have customers that require these materials as big as Round Top is. And as much as we'll be producing, it'll be a fraction of what's required for the U.S. supply chain. So when you hear companies make claims about being able to provide all the materials required for the U.S. supply chain, it's absolute nonsense. Um, you know, we're privy to understanding what some of those numbers are uh, from consumers, and uh, it, it'll take many projects uh, and many decades to be able to provide the materials across the supply chain. But we've been testing third-party feedstock uh, from Australia and elsewhere, um, which is one of the key parts of the processing method that we're using, which is iron exchange which allows us to treat third party materials. So we're already in advanced discussion with a number of companies around the world, pre-producers, eventual producers, companies with existing feedstock to bring their concentrates here into the US. We'll treat it over here and then provide that into the US supply chain. So right now, the only ones that are doing that are China. And these companies either, um, for whatever reason, don't want to send the materials to China, would prefer it go into the supply chain here. And of course, we have the magnet plant. So, um, you know, we'll be a small producer, a relatively small producer of NDPR. We've obviously got an abundance of DYTB. So for the magnet plant, we're looking for additional non-Chinese feedstock materials that we'll treat. And then it'll go through the magnet plant when that's recommissioned next year. You, you, you saw, I'm, I'm sure, the response to the president uh, of the United States executive order on supply chains. And he, it, it mentioned that uh, sourcing could be done from trusted allies. Uh, so the fact is that the trusted allies that have always supplied the United States with raw materials have been uh, Australia and Canada. So you're already in those markets looking looking for feedstock for, for your centralized plant, correct? That, that's correct. I mean, you know, I think the Biden administration is, is on the right path. Mm -hmm. um, the issue we have is when the US government talks about, you know, bringing in materials and relying on, on countries like Australia and Canada, 
I mean, there are a couple of things to note. Firstly, you know, we can't rely solely on companies in Australia and Canada because they are free to sell their materials into any markets, including China. Uh, that's different for US uh, mining companies where, you know, regulations would require us to keep certain materials in the US supply chain. And I mean, the US government's not going out and acquiring materials on behalf of the EV sector, on behalf of the medical sector, uh, consumer electronics companies. So there's no apparatus within the US government to say that we're going to acquire materials from Australia and Canada and then somehow pass them along to a, a Ford or GM or whoever it is. I mean, that just doesn't exist. My work with the US Defense Department, uh, they've always emphasized that the issue for them is, is the final production. Of, of, of the critical drill must be done in a domestic facility. So they, in fact, uh, even as recently as two years ago, they, they, if somebody were bringing in material from China, they didn't care, providing it was processed in the United States. But I think that what you're doing is much more in line with what uh, the US federal government is looking for. Uh, they really don't Aren't con they weren't concerned about where it came from, although today now with the new uh, response from the government, they're, they're looking for tr material from trusted allies. But what I most appreciate about what you're saying is that uh, it's, it's rare for, for a person in, in your position to admit that it's nonsense for one company to supply an entire market. In, fa in fact, this nonsense just, con just continues. Uh, the fact is, I, I think that the markets for your product, let's say lithium and the rare earths, for example, are open-ended. We're really entering a bull market for these materials, and there just aren't enough in the world to satisfy the demand. So I think you're in for a good, very good run. Yeah, I mean, Jack, there's no competition in this space. I mean, we can have five rare earth projects like Roundtop, and then we'll start being in business, if you will, as a country and as a supply chain. Uh, so unfortunately, you know, companies that are either buying for government funding or you're trying to promote, you know, get their stock price up and running, make certain claims. And I think these claims are dangerous. I think when they talk about being able to produce materials or provide materials into a supply chain that either are not even contained within their resources um, or they don't have the downstream capabilities, I think it, it lulls us into a false sense of security that we can rely on a couple of companies that are making these claims. Um, no one company, no one project is going to provide the materials for the US supply chain. We're going to have to have 10, 15, 20 projects up and running. That's not going to happen for decades. So the question is, is if we can have, you know, 10%, 15%, 20% in the next 10 years uh, that we can supply ourselves that would be an achievement. Um, but let's see if we can even get to that kind of number and sort of wean ourselves off this, uh, what today, the current dependence on China for everything. Well, I wish you were on an internal uh, platform in the Pentagon giving that talk and you had four or five stars on your shoulders, so they had to do it. But anyway. I'm not sure how good that would be for the country, but. <laughs> we, I'm not commenting on that. But uh, th Penny, thank you very much for, for the update. And I look very much uh, look forward to your uh, debate or discussion with Australia's Vital Minerals on the future of, of the, both of your projects. Thank you. Well, I've, I've met Jeff and I think it'll be more of a discussion than a debate because he's a uh, very level-headed uh, person and uh, also oh, yeah. in but going, doing things in the right direction. As the moderator, I'm gonna make sure it's a, a little bit of a debate. We'll, we'll find something to disagree on, I'm sure. But, but thank well, thank you, Jack, appreciate it. Sure. And appreciate the work that you're doing to promote sort of what's a very important issue of our time. Thank you.